what's good, Commanders fans? So the Commanders are, have a scheduled top 30 visit with Hendon Hooker. This is per John Kime, the Tennessee quarterback. He's about 25 years old. He did go to Virginia Tech, so somewhat of a local guy. Then he transferred to Tennessee. Um, top 30 visits, of course, you got to take him with a grain of salt. Jahan Dotson, we didn't have a top 30 visit with him last year. We didn't draft him. And, of course, you have top 30 visits with multiple guys. We had top 30 visits with, with running backs last year, like Kenneth Walker, and uh, Brees Hall, we didn't draft them. So there's there's a lot of guys that you have top 30 visits with that you end up just not drafting. There's a lot of guys that you don't even have, you don't even talk to or don't even have a visit with, and you end up drafting it and drafting the guys. So uh, there's a lot of times where some guys will be like, I never even talked to commanders, and, and they drafted me. I didn't even know they were going to draft me. So, so you know, you, you just kind of take them with a grain of salt. But um, John Kime also says they did meet with Anthony Richardson, the quarterback from Florida, at the combine. He is not scheduled for a visit. But these visits are for a variety of reasons, can be to learn more medically, sometimes get a good feel on a guy, so no need to visit. Of course, Hinton Hooker tore his ACL, so most likely he will not be playing this year, this year coming up. So and I'm not a big fan of drafting guys with injuries, as you saw what happened with Bryce Love. We put him on ice, and the guy never played football again. He ended up retiring and becoming a doctor. Um, congrats to him to becoming a doctor, but you know he never played football for the Commanders. Um, sometimes get a good feel on a guy, so need, no need to visit. Rivera said they haven't rolled out anything at 16. Hard to imagine taking a quarterback at 16, but due, di but due diligence, Hooker will be interested in coming off knee injury, but talented. Does he make it into the late first? If not, have to be ready just in case. So collect all info. Oh, all right. Um, wanted to shout out to Fanatics as well yesterday. Had a great time there. Um, Pro Tech came through. My uh, cousin Adam came through. I saw Ro Ro Washington Road Warrior. We got a bunch of drinks, had some good food. Watched the UConn versus um, San Diego State game. Had a great time. This is a really nice place. You got to be 21 and over to go. It's a really nice place. Good food, bunch of TVs, good vibes. Um, they're playing some music there too. So it was a good time for sure. It was a good time for sure. I'm going to show, probably show some pictures. If not in the video, in my community tab, took a couple of pictures of ProTech and, and Road Warrior, Washington Road Warrior. If you guys not, have not seen his Instagram, he's a super, super Commanders fan. And of course, of course ProTech, I'll put his YouTube channel down below in the link. So you guys make sure you guys subscribe to his channel as well. So I definitely had a great time uh, for sure. So Hennon Hooker. Uh, was a Heisman. He was in the Heisman runner before he got injured. Chris Sims has him as his top three quarterback above Will Levis, above Anthony Richardson, right behind CJ Stroud or Bryce Young. So he, he he likes this guy a lot. Chris Sims, I mean, you can, you know, he has some some uh, interesting takes for sure. But a lot of times he's been right about quarterbacks. And I like Hendon Hooker. I get the gimmicky offense from Tennessee. They, a lot of people say it's a one read offense. It's a very easy offense. Quick throws, getting the ball out quick. Uh, guys running wide open, stack, you know, wide. Wide split offense. You know, Jalen Hyatt is super fast. You know, he gets wide open super quick. But um, I thought he made some good throws, man. And he's a dual threat quarterback. The guy can run. He's got some wheels on him, man. If he can keep that mobility after the ACL injury, I think he's an intriguing quarterback prospect, man. I wouldn't take him in the first round because of the injury. And, you know, we don't really have a lot of picks. I think we, I do think we, I think trading back would be a good move. Um, unless, you know, somebody who's really talented falls to 16. But, Trading back, I think, would be a good move. I don't think he's going to make it past the second round. If he made it to the third round, I definitely would consider taking him. But at the same time, you want to see what Sam Howell can do. You got Jacoby Brissett. Some people compare him to Hooker to Jacoby Brissett. I've seen some Deshaun Watson comparisons. I've seen um, Geno Smith comparisons as well. So a lot of people are high on him and Hooker as well. You look at some of his numbers. Didn't turn over the ball much. You can say that's because of the offense. But I, I think he's just a smart quarterback, man. He's really cool, calm, and collected in the pocket, man. Uh, you watch the Florida game. He had a really nice pump fake, evaded the rush, made some guys miss, ran for a first down, had 112 rushing yards uh, against Florida. And a lot of them, some of them are not really designed runs. This guy, he's making guys miss and, and evading the rush in the pocket and making moves. My favorite game that I saw him play was really against Alabama, 52-49. to It was a tough game. They were down 49-42. to He had to tie it up, made a big pass to Jalen Hyatt over the middle of the field in traffic. Cool, calm, and collecting in the pocket. Um, he throws guys open as well. Um, good touch. Sometimes he will overthrow guys, throw the ball a little too high. But uh, you look at his numbers, what, 30, 27 touchdowns, two picks, and a span of two years. And he only threw five interceptions. So he doesn't turn the ball over a lot. You look at some of his advanced stats as well. Turnover-worthy plays via PFF for top five quarterbacks. He had zero turnover worthy plays and 301 dropbacks now i know he threw some interceptions but some of those weren't his fault you saw some guys drops you know drops some passes and went off their hands against bama where he threw the interception the, the one guy he should have caught it just bounced off his hands and uh it was an interception against bama he had zero bryce young had one anthony richardson had seven will levis had nine 
uh, uh, Hendon Hooker had a 90.8 PFF grade as well. Um, and a lot of GMs, Mike Tannenbaum, former GM, he says Hendon Hooker could come off the board as early as the as the fifth overall pick to the Seahawks. I don't see that, but I can see the Seahawks, you know, thinking like he's another Geno Smith. And Geno Smith played really well. And they, they've done well with dual threat quarterbacks like Russell Wilson and Geno Smith, guys that can move and make guys miss as well. He's already met with the Texans, Colts, Giants, Titans, and Buccaneers privately. Several scouts reportedly believe that there's no shot Hendon Hooker makes it out of the first round. So even with the ACL injury, a lot of scouts like this guy. And he really could make it out. He really could be a first round draft pick. Um, now the knock on him, you look at this stat here, traditional drop back rate per, uh, for notable, notable draft prospects, percentage of drop, drop backs with three plus steps. Hendon Hooker had 14% of drop backs with three plus steps. So that kind of shows you like the, the offense being easy. You know, you get the snap, one, two, get the ball out quick. One, two, get the ball out quick. And that's kind of what Eric Bieniemy wants to do with the West Coast offense anyway, getting the ball out quick. But, you know, C.J. Stroud, 57.8% with drop backs with three-plus steps. Anthony Richardson had 57%. Bryce Young, 56%. But Hendon Hooker, 14% compared to some of the other top quarterbacks. So that could be a knock on him, but I really don't really take too much stock in that either, to be honest with you. But I I like I like what I saw from Hendon Hooker. I think, you know, third round, I think that would be a steal. If we trade back and say trade the 16th pick for like the 25th pick and maybe the 57th, that's something that I did in a mock draft with the Giants. I traded back from like 16 to like 20, it was like 25 or something like that and pick 57. So I got two, I got one extra pick and you have the luxury of getting another guy. So possibly, of course, you still want to get an offensive lineman or a corner in the first three rounds. Got it. Got to be a beef up this offensive line. And is it worth it with Ron Rivera being in a basically a hot seat year, in my opinion, with a new owner coming in? Do you have the luxury of taking a quarterback when you have to really know what you have in Sam Howell and help Sam Howell as much as you can with the offensive line for sure? So, um, straights for him, NFL pocket passer. He stays cool, calm, played. You see, even in the, even in the Georgia game when they lost, he still stayed tough in the pocket. Uh, rhythmic passer who prefers to keep plays on schedule. Throwing outside the numbers to Jalen Hyatt as well. Good operation time with twitchy release and quick game. Patient in allowing route combination, co combinations to develop. Uh, weaknesses sustained the torn ACL and left knee late last season. Coming off an injury as a 25 year old rookie, rarely required to get through a slate of progressions in the Vols' office. So that's just the big knock and big big concern. Might need to prove he can make window throws to stationary targets. So I'm intrigued. I don't think they're going to draft him. I think they're just doing their due diligence, checking on the injury. We'll see. Let me know what you guys think about Hendon Hooker. And of course, Eric Bieniemy did go to their pro day to see Hendon Hooker and also Darnell Wright. Jalen Hyatt was there as well. We're not going to draft a wide receiver. But Darnell, Darnell Wright, out of the three guys that were showcasing the pro day, I think, uh, of course, Hendon Hooker didn't perform because of the torn ACL. But out of the out of the guys that are going to be drafted, those three guys are going to be highly drafted. Um, I think they're looking at Darnell Wright for sure. He can play right tackle. He can play left tackle. He can play right guard. So keep your eye on Darnell Wright for sure. All right, you guys. Let me know what you guys think. Healthy Commanders. Peace.